We are back with another installment of Where We Live, an iconic venue for honky-tonk music now literally plays music itself. Well, some salvage pieces from that nightclub at any rate. Introducing the Troutcaster guitar, here with the story, 17's Bob Price. This is a story of reincarnation, a happy ending to the tragic loss of a longtime landmark. This is what's left of Trout's, the iconic Oildale honky-tonk that the late Vern Hoover opened in 1945 at what had previously been a bar called Red's. Ironically, another Red, songwriter and general cut-up Red Simpson, became closely associated with Trout's in his later years. Trout's closed almost a decade ago. The building was sold in 2018. That's about the time the famous sign went missing. And then it burned to the ground in April. Red's son, David Simpson, a musician himself, salvaged some slightly toasted wooden siding from the saloon before it was all hauled away. And that's really where our story starts. David Simpson gave several pieces of that hallowed but aged challenged wood to Tony Brown, a luthier whose TNT Customs has created instruments using all sorts of cast-off material, including the Pismo Beach Pier and a piece of Merle Haggard's famed boxcar childhood home. Brown set himself to the task of building a small number of six strings modeled on the design of a Fender Telecaster, knockoffs that would do all red proud. He set about the task of turning that scrap redwood into objects of redeemed glory. It was a painstaking effort, but with the help of girlfriend Teresa Spanky, a musician who sang at Trout's literally hundreds of times over 20 years, they took on the challenge, and they found some surprises. When I sanded down a little bit, I discovered the, the red paint underneath it. And so we sanded down, kind of left some of the patina look on it, yeah. and then we thought that was a really cool look, so we left it. Yeah. We didn't want to take it down to bare wood because we wanted it to represent trouts where it came from. Right. Eventually, it was time for the hardware, some elements more visible than others. The frets, the pickup, the special varnish, the abalone inlay. Trial error, trial error. Two months later, voila. Teresa Spanky, the other T in TNT, handled the graphics on the guitar. So what's really cool is I worked there off and on for over 20 years, and you know I made a lot of music inside those walls, and now there's going to be a lot of music made from those walls. And now you too can experience a little of Trout's reincarnated if you happen to attend a show featuring a player who owns one of the four or five in existence. And it so happens that's easily achieved. The proud owner of this Trout's caster guitar is Ernie Lewis, one of the regular performers at Buck Owens Crystal Palace. Check him out. You might just run into the couple that, in the best traditions of legendary Bakersfield guitar builders like Moserite, are keeping the legacy alive. And so Trout's lives on in just the sort of places it deserves, on the stages of the Bakersfield sound. In Oildale, Robert Price, 17 News. First time I played this thing. <laughs> and on that note, we want to tell you that you can catch Ernie Lewis on his Trout Caster guitar tomorrow and Saturday night at Buck Owens Crystal Palace. And if you'd like to hear more from Tony Brown on the making of that special guitar, watch our web extra on KGET.com. That is super cool. Oh, uh, way cool. Yes. All right.